Welcome to the first week of your online lecture. We're going to do this a lot like how I do it in class. So we'll have the module on Canvas for week nine page layout. And here are some notes about page layout as well as some supporting tutorials. When I'm done with this video, I will add it under here under supporting tutorials. So let me go to my PowerPoint. We have some layouts to discuss and you'll see here page layout. I won't read this to you word for word because you can obviously read it, but we're going to be going over layout and InDesign and how to combine text and images together using grids, rule of thirds, typographical hierarchy, and other important elements of design. So let me go to this PowerPoint. This is just this PowerPoint is full of great examples of layout that I wanted to talk to you guys about in class and we would dissect these and talk about what makes them good design. So this one uses a grid. This one is a very straightforward grid option because it actually has the grid as part of the design. It's really unique. It's balanced in terms of image and typography and then it uses these columns in a creative way. This one has a lot of leading lines. That's another great tool to use when you're doing layout and also go back to your principles and elements of design. This one uses um, text wrap to follow this unique shape and the lines lead you through the layout. So you can see here it has a pull quote and it has the body copy. It doesn't necessarily have a big headline but the image is the key part of this that draws your eye in and then the text follows those lines and creates um, a symmetrical balance. And then this one for scale and hierarchy, this is a great one to show how typography is used in different scales. And then the image and text are balanced with one another. This one also has a pull quote. You'll see that common in magazine layout. And you'll see a feature image and then um, the text following. So we have the then and now here making a big headline. It has a sub headline and then the body copy. It also has a drop cap to add some interest and then um, the text elements in here. So this is a really nice design. It's simple, straightforward, clean design. Uh, it doesn't get too crazy with the typography. The grid is pretty straightforward and consistent. Um, so you could do something like this or you could do, sorry, let me go back, something like this. It's up to you. There's all different ways to lay out designs and draw interest and you want to pull that style from whatever the article is that you're highlighting. So you want to do something that fits with the subject matter. This one is a great example of alignment. It has the title running across the entire spread and it divides up the image and the body copy. But everything is aligned in a way where it connects and feels harmonious, even though there's a lot going on here. Uh, it's very intentional with the way that the text leads from her hand into the body copy, and it draws the focus into the subject. And then it has all of these interesting elements that pull focus into the different parts so your eye really flows through the entire image. And it also has some balance here with using color where this is white space and the colors reverse here. So there's all different things you can do like that, but these are just some really great examples. This one is a great example of contrast. So it's a good example of using contrast to distinguish things and then using um, similar colors like the pink, the tone on tone to create some harmony. So. Nicki Minaj here is the focal point, that's obvious. She's wearing this black and white dress and then she is added onto a pink background to make her really stand out. And then the text goes behind her and wraps around her so that she is the focus and the main part of the image. And she's contrasting with the background and she's contrasting with her type. And then it's a really unique use of color here where they pulled pink, probably from her lips, and use that to highlight these other points. This one is a great example of balance. So um, this page 
but the spread ends about here if you are looking at just the spread image and it uses black and white and then it has text and then it has a photo contrasting each other it's very clean it uses white space really well and instead of like this previous one where it flows across the entire page it divides up the two things, but the color, the use of color and the use of white space create a really great balance. This one is a great use of repetition. Sometimes you have to use more than one picture. So here you see how they repeated the picture multiple times. This design would actually work well even without the pop out image, but that just adds another extra element. Oops, sorry guys, go back here. That adds an even additional element of interest. So I like the way that they're using a grid and then they break that grid. It's a good asymmetrical design. It uses contrast and it's interesting and it adds movement across the page. Their pull quote follows the horizontal images. And like I said, I think this would work really well even without this pop out image, but it just adds another extra layer on here. So think about layering. A lot of these use layers between the text and the images. If we go back again, this one has this breakout box creating a layer. Nicki Minaj, her name is going back behind her arm. She's so famous that it's totally fine to cover her name. People know exactly who you're talking about and her face is right there. So you can do creative, interesting things like that if you want to. Same thing with this one. There's layers between the text and the images that are going on here. Go back here to this one and you'll see the, the layers between the images. Um, and again, if you prefer a more clean style, it would totally work without this and you could even add a quote or something over here. This is a great example using text wrap. Sometimes your design just depends on what images that you get to use. And this is a really creative way to use this image and create interest. Um, again, there's some visual contrast going on here with the black and white. It's really clean, great use of white space. Sorry, I have to keep stop clicking like that. I keep doing it on accident because I'm not used to doing PowerPoints on this computer. Anyway, great use of contrast and white space and symmetry. Lots of principles and elements of design going on here. And if you watch that other video, I teach you guys how to do a text wrap. This one uses white space. It's very full, very um, full of different elements. You have a title that's going from the top and wraps around, but the name is the key part here. You have a pull quote, but then look at all this white space in here, giving the text and the image room to breathe so they don't fight each other too much. It all works really well, and this anchors and gives you a border. Meanwhile, it has some air and room to breathe. A lot of these use the same principles and elements that other ones use. Um, this one also has good contrast. If we go back here, repetition, it's repeating these bold black text features. Um, but it's a really good example of white space and how sometimes you just need to give your text and image some room in between there. So that's it for the PowerPoint. That's what we would have gone over in class and discussed why these are good examples of layout. The next thing I'd like to do is go through Converge Magazine and because some of you will actually be using this magazine um, and doing your assignment for the week. And I really wanted to delve into this in class and give everybody an opportunity to analyze the design and the elements going on here. I'm going to do a quick run through and then with our discussion board for the week, I'm going to distribute these pages and have you guys do your own mini critique of them. So they use student artwork for the cover. I think this is a great clean design when you have the symmetrical bold image in the middle, it was really smart to leave the headline and the rest of the design very minimal. This is a really unique use of typography. They could have easily just written converge on here, but that really gives it um, an extra, extra element of visual interest. So you'll see that consistency among these spreads kind of varies from feature to feature. Uh, it does use typography in a really interesting way for the table of contents. 
and the text is pretty large. Um, they use this serif copy throughout the text pretty consistently um, to give it that uh, readability element, I would say. So uh, let's delve into the features. So here is a feature. They do a lot of layering. You guys have to be careful how you layer images on top of each other. It can really affect the readability and you have to ask yourself, is this essential to the what it's communicating? Is it essential to the story? Um, I have read most of these stories at one point, but it's been a while since I've read them. So I forgot how different elements work in. Um, you guys should have your copy of this if you want to read and delve into that yourself. Certain things that I think are unnecessary but used quite often are things like drop shadows. I don't think this drop shadow is adding anything to this page. It just adds another element to distract from what you're doing. I also have a real problem with the way these lines for notebook paper do not relate to the columns. They're just flowing through here as a background. If I were to use an element like this, like notebook paper, I would prefer that it's actually handwritten and that it's actually following these lines. Otherwise, I think it just kind of gets in the way. What I probably would have recommended to keep this a little cleaner in terms of layout and visual interest is just set the columns on a white or plain background. And then if you really were attached to the notebook paper as a visual element, pull it over to one spread, maybe put it in the corner, just kind of peeking over, or used it in a way you would actually see notebook paper being used. Um, let's see, this one is pretty clean. This is a classic layout, two columns, and it's got the photo anchored, and then the type is placed over there. You really can't go wrong with a nice clean layout, and then it's got a pull quote with some interesting text that relates to the story. So this one you can't really go wrong. It's clean, it's consistent, um, but could it be more interesting? Possibly, it just depends on what the story is about and the level of design that was in here. Um, it's a great photo that you see here with a mother and a daughter and you connect it and you see the face. Uh, faces are really important. So this one looks really nice. Um, you can always elevate these types of things, but again, you can't go wrong with staying clean and consistent. Um, here's where we get into some interesting choices. Um, I think this headline is an interesting effect. I think it could be executed a little bit cleaner for communication, but I do like things like this. So you guys think about things like this where um, you are doing something interesting with the headline to connect everything. Um, again, nice photo anchored in here. Um, there are a lot of these images used as background images. Again, think about how that is affecting the overall communication and think about some of the illustration techniques we've learned along the way. This one, again, it has a background. And think about backgrounds in terms of magazine design. They're not used very often because it does affect the readability of the story. So maybe if these elements, they have some cute carnival elements in here, were actually used as little images kind of placed along and the text was wrapping around, that could be much more effective than using it as a background because it kind of gets in the way of the text. But these are beautiful images, colorful images. Um, you have, you know, beautiful fair images, so you really can't go wrong. Uh, reunion on the Midway, this text, it's working, it's bold, it's orange, it connects with the color, but this is a story about the fair and the carnival aspect of the fair. So there was a missed opportunity here, I'd say, to really connect the typography to the story in an interesting way. Again, beautiful photos. And here's kind of what I was talking about when I say that it could have been popped out. So instead of having this transparent and flowing off, I would just pull this image to fit in this space and then have the text wrap around it. I think that would be a lot more effective. Um, this one is using a really great top typography choice. It's got an interesting display typeface, and I like the hierarchy that's going on here. Um, again, gradients. 
as backgrounds are really distracting. So you guys want to think clean first. Think clean and consistent and then figure out where to add your elements of interest. Um, this layout is pretty good too. It's got the three books and the pull quote. It's just that I think this gradient is distracting. I think there's a different way to bring color in here. Um, we'll skip this ad portion. This is another one that keeps it clean and consistent. They actually did pull an image and anchor it at the bottom. Uh, I'm not sure where the color palette here is coming from, especially since I didn't read the story, but for me it feels like a disconnect. Um, this colors just feel light and young and fun, and I like the typography choices. I feel like the color maybe isn't connecting to the story. Again, beautiful image and text. You can't go wrong keeping it nice and clean. And this is a good thing to point out. Some of you might need to do this in multiple pages. I will find that out from uh, Jennifer Berger when we get those features. Uh, here is another one that uses a background. And again, I want to encourage you guys to think of adding interest in a different way so that the text can stand on its own and really be highlighted and then the images and the text can all connect together in interesting ways, but it's not too much of a distraction. Uh, this one is very interesting. It's got some good choices going on here. The headline is moved to the top. It's got great hierarchy of information, and it even does this unique thing where it splits the columns apart by actually using a road. These are things that, you know, I wouldn't necessarily think of to do or consider good design, but then it's done and you're like, oh yeah, that does work really well. So um, it uses road signs and brings these elements in. Okay, this is an extension of this article here. So I would say where the nice surprising visual elements come in they aren't carried over as strongly here where they definitely could be. So this could definitely connect in some way because it's running across and ends here with this spread, it just kind of ends in this page. So I would maybe even figure out a way to go in and then up and kind of contain these two things instead of just running into the other story and arbitrarily disappearing here. Um, but I do think that there's a lot of interesting sorry guys, design elements happening on this page. Um, again, this one's pretty clean and straightforward, photo and images. But I want you guys, if you get a story that's straight up a photo and some text, I want you to think about connecting these in interesting ways. Look at lots of design. I think this is great how this is anchored across the page. And then they have a pull story going on here. But let's elevate this magazine. Let's think of new ways to do things. Again, great images for this story. That's what helps. Good photography also helps. So this one, this one has used a lot of photo manipulation techniques, but let's talk about the intentions behind them. So don't just chase your dreams, run them down. This article is about um, obviously running movement, things like that. So that was created within the visual elements of the story. Um, it's using some lines to connect these things. I think that that can be a really smart technique. You're using a consistent design element throughout. If it's here and here, I would have wanted, oops, sorry, too far, to also see it here. So if you're doing something like this to create visual interest and connect your images, don't just do it in one place, really take that a step farther. And then I might have even done this in a different color to really highlight the intention of this design element. But I like the way that it's thinking outside the box and it's trying to create an extra element to photos that would otherwise may not be as interesting. So think about ways to do that too when you're laying things out. And then I also like the way the pull quote here you know, it needed to be here in this dead space, so otherwise it would have just been dead space and it's a pull quote, so that's a great way to utilize space there too. 
Um, this one is great. It's got the numbers creating visual interest that move you along the page. Um, and it's got good photography. And I like the way the um, typography was layered here and it's using color. Um, let's see. There's a few things going on with spacing between the words and the titles, but other than that, I think the concept here is really strong. This one, again, is really clean and consistent. Um, I think it's interesting the way these shapes were added in the photo, so it's not just a square. I think that could really work. It can also be a little distracting. So see, we have this point right here almost touching the text. So a few of the tension lines need to be adjusted, but I like the way this design was thinking outside the box and wanted something more than just square photos on a page. Um, let's see, is this the same article? One thing, okay, one thing that's confusing about this is this is the lead to this article. That is not clear. Um, I thought this was an ad and I skipped over it because I haven't read this whole thing in a while and I only flipped through it one other time. So finding you in the universe. Look, this is a beautiful photo. Um, as you go through, it doesn't let you know that it's connecting to this. This almost does read as an ad, even though it says story and photos and you assume it's going somewhere else. These need to be connected more throughout the layout. So I also think it's interesting how this photo technique, let me see, does it end here? Yes. So if we go back, that photo technique was not used on this image. It was used on these two images and it was not used here. So again, think of consistency. Pull your design elements throughout the entire story and think of a way for clarity and consistency as well as great design and creativity. You guys got to do it all. This one is a great way of leading, but it helps that this is a spread. Now, if this one had the ability to be a spread, it would be much stronger. But sometimes when you're working with, lay with layout, there's advertising and all these other things that come into play and you get what you get. But this is kind of the same thing that that other story was doing, but because they follow each other, it's a much more consistent spread. I like that it has a big headline. I think that these elements that pop out can, can add a lot of interest. A couple things I'd like to see. I'd like to see some additional text elements over here, maybe a pull quote, maybe a sub headline, similar to the ones we saw in the PowerPoint presentation. Um, it needs an extra element of interest. It's trying to go for a clean, minimal design, but then it's not connected enough to pull that off. It needs some connecting factor among it. And then these are really beautiful. Who doesn't like seeing some cool, what are these called guys? Um, rocks, I'll just call them rocks, even though I know it's minerals, whatever. I should probably read the article. Anyway, these are really cool visual elements, but they're not connecting to anything. They're just floating in space next to these columns. They could wrap around, they could be pulled together, they could be layered. There's a lot of missed opportunity in here. It's clean and consistent and it's working, but I think that there are some missed opportunities to add elements of interest. And here we go, healing, it says healing gem therapy. So that's, those are the, what these are. Um, again, this story is connecting its story through the use of a background color. Background colors could totally work. Um, I want to see you guys not utilize drop shadows unless there's a very intentional element to it. If you're trying to make it look like there's photos sitting on a page, drop shadows are great. But if you just have a photo, uh, try to anchor it in some other way or don't rely on drop shadows as a visual element. I think they're always more distracting. I think these are really cool photos. Um, again, I'd like to see this typography connect a little bit more. I'd like to see this microphone maybe anchored to the bottom and not floating in space. <coughs> oh, sorry, I'm talking a lot. Um, and I like the text wrap. These are great images. I wish they were maybe anchored up here. There could just be more ways to connect this whole layout with a little more intention, but the elements are there and there's a lot of interest happening here. So I want you guys to think about that. Think about the way your text and your images are connecting. 
and how they can be clear and also creative. Uh, this is another one that I think is really cool and I like the way that uh, the numbering is working and flowing through here. But right off the bat, how to be an annoying customer, that to me, that headline screams like that it's going to be something that's kind of funny. It's gonna have a lightness to it. But the black and white and um, the typography overall has a seriousness to it. So I think that there was a missed opportunity to add a lightness and sense of humor to this. This would be a great opportunity if someone is a great illustrator to maybe even add some illustrative elements or like the the like the comic kind of style or something that really like drives the point home. But I like that they used a consistent uh, receipt going on here and that it's kind of different each time and that it, they all flow. So it's a good layout. Again, I just think when you're trying to connect to the content of the piece, think about that in terms of overall style. This is another nice one. Um, but again, connecting the typography and the images together with a little more intention would really uh, take this to the next level. Um, I like this big type for the word biggest. I think this is a great image. Um, I think you get in here and things like this can read a little bit clip arty and I think you guys can elevate that a little bit either by creating your own illustration or not just having them, they just feel like they're dropped into fill up space. Again, intention is everything and just little tweaks between things would really like take it to the next level. But there's so many good elements in all of these stories and I want you guys to think about as you look through the magazine and you look through the layouts that we talked about in class, how to take these to the next level for the assignment. Um, okay, this is more of this one and they're connected by that black background. But again, it took me a minute to know 100%, especially not reading the story, that these two belong to the same family. You need to pull an element over here, over here to connect them. Um, these art ones are really good. Again, clean white background, very gallery vibe. And there's some great images in here that are connected to the story. And I love how it uses the artwork to be a background. Um, just maybe little things like this text box could be a little bit more intentional in different ways to do that. Uh, again, she's floating in space. I'd love to see this artist anchored somewhere, but I love how this page has the artist and their art side by side. And again, don't be afraid of white space. White space is great, especially when the focal point is something like this that's so beautiful. I just would like to see, uh, I never like to see people floating in space. I wanna see something like this anchored. And let's see, like this one does a great job. And then this one's really beautiful. And I like how this color bar even works with this. Um, Sorry, I was reading what it was about to see if it actually connects with that in some way. And I don't think there's a lot of intention behind that except that it creates some visual interest. So it doesn't always have to have a lot of meaning. I would maybe bring this element down to about right here. Maybe make it less prominent and let more white space flow. And then this is the photo contest winner. So maybe this photo doesn't need to be anchored. Maybe this is the perfect opportunity to really let this photo shine with lots of white space around it. Um, if I were to take this, let me do a quick redesign of this page for you guys, just to kind of show you what I'm talking about. But I think this has so much potential. When I say these things have potential but missed opportunities, this is what I mean. I'm not going to add the, um, the titles to these. So 
We click through. This is pretty much the end of the magazine. I love the back too. It's leading away. It's got a great image. Overall, this magazine is so good and I'm excited for you guys to take these features and take them to the next level. So let me escape full screen view here. Let me go to InDesign. And I am going to just make an eight half by 11 page for this example. And I'm going to pull over my screen captured photos. I'm not even gonna reset the text, but I just wanna show you in terms of layout um, how you really need to think about intention and the meaning behind everything. So again, this is a story about a featured photo contest winner. So when you see photos, especially in galleries and things like that, you often see big white space and walls and things like that when you are in a gallery. So it's really highlighting the art itself. So I think just putting this anchored in its space, or not anchored in the space, actually floating in this space and giving it more white space. And again, because I'm just using JPEGs, I have no idea what type size this is, but you guys get the idea. And I want to show you what I actually mean when I'm saying a lot of these have so much potential, but just a little more intention needed to take them to the next level. So, like I said, I think this is a really cool visual element. I think it anchors the page well. Um, let me turn off. Hide my framed edges so you can really see it. but just giving this photo a little bit more room. I get that they are trying to make the photo as big as possible, it's the feature. And let's see, these aren't even centered right. So ignore like the text and centered and just pretend like this is all aligned because of the way that I screen captured it. But something like this really highlights the photo and this is a really cool element and now it's not distracting from the photo. And this is what I mean about just giving everything a little more intention and elevating the overall look and feel of it a little bit more. So this would actually be my redesign sample of of this page. So you guys, let me pull this in. And this is a great page overall. I think the magazine is really cool. I'm excited for you guys to be a part of it. I just want you guys to see and really focus on intention here as you're thinking of page layout. So do you guys see that difference? Let me expand InDesign here. This is before and this is my after. And again, let me even scale this to the size that it should be for readability. Now they're more roughly the same size. <clears throat> but see how white space can really be your friend and it lets each element really shine through. Instead of cramming everything together, there's no room to let anything breathe here. But when you add some white space, each of these really cool elements, even the typography is really beautiful in this. It's a really nice typeface. Um, I think that when you do that, you just let each thing shine a little bit more. So think about that. Think about intention, think about clarity, and think about really communicating what you wanna communicate as you guys work on this project. Okay, so this would have been the in-class lecture. I will get a discussion board going and um, let me go over the assignment really quick. I'm sorry these videos are going to be so long, but you would be sitting in class listening to me talk anyway. And let me pull up. So we have 2020 because I had to change it. It is not a printed assignment. So watch the video that will be listed here and it will help you if you guys are working on oh, sorry
If you guys are working on a project six, just straight up, it will help you get set up. It'll also show you how to set up your pages if you're working on the Converge magazine. So our class is gonna be split up. 15 of you will work on Converge and um, the rest of you will just do this assignment. And in this assignment, you guys get to pick, uh, and you can just use dummy copy and you can pick a person. And the finish size is 17 by 11. It's a two page spread. Here's an example. And again, this video walks you through how to set this up. And I even have a checklist to make sure if you're done. You guys need to do a subhead, a pull quote, and a secondary supporting image. You'll need a typographic headline and you'll need a photo. So if you're using a photo and you wanna do something cool like we did with, let me go back to my PowerPoint. These layout samples, things like text wrap and clipping. You can watch this video. If there's a specific example of something that you don't see here, uh, shoot me an email and I will make you a new video. If you wanna learn how to do things like this, these are uh, these can be done in Illustrator, InDesign, or Photoshop would be the easiest way because you could get a clean transition between points like this when things are layered. Um, but basically you guys work to your skill set, whether it's text wrapping, whether it's a clean, consistent layout with an image that stands alone and then typographical heart hierarchy, you guys take that where you want it to go and pick a subject matter that really fits with that because in project six, you guys get to choose that yourself. If you're working on Converge, I want you guys to look through this again. I will post this link. So if you don't have your printed copy, you can come back and look at this copy but I really want you guys to focus on the stories and think about how you can really connect them visually through typography and imagery. So, all right guys, that's it for this week. Um, we're gonna get through this transition together and I expect emails and communication if any of you are stuck or confused about anything. Okay, thanks, bye.